again, everyone. Welcome to this Imsta and Terry's Autotune video, and thanks for taking a look. My name is Chris Griffin, and for the next 30 minutes, I'll take you through the brand new Autotune Pro X plugin from Antares, offering tricks and tips you won't find anywhere else. That is the point of these videos, so I hope you enjoy your time watching. My career has been a ride through technology and art with ups and downs through the years, but highlights include mixes for Madonna, engineering for Kanye West and John Legend, recording jazz legend John McLaughlin, and others as time has passed. Now, years ago, I began working with hardware and software companies to get some of my own products built, and in the process, made friends with the people at Antares. I love the team there and believe in their work, so they asked me to do videos and introduce new products, and I like being part of the extended crew. It makes me feel special. So, I'm happy to be here once again with Imsta, representing Antares and introducing the new Autotune Pro X to you all. This is the first of two streams I'll do today, the other being an extended overview of the newest Autotune and limited plugins like Slice, Vocodist, and the new Vocal EQ. So, thanks for taking time to hang. Let me change cameras here and we'll get started. If you haven't already noticed, I am working through the last days of COVID here, and I'm a little stuffed up, but I'm eager to be here and show you this new plugin. You probably want to see all the new features first, and I think this is the premiere of all the new features. So I created a montage of all of that so it'll move quickly. So let's do that for a couple of minutes, and then we'll dive into the good stuff. Cool. All right, here we go. Apple native silicon support is now fully implemented, as is full compatibility with the latest Mac and Windows operating systems. There's a redesigned, scalable user interface for super sharp graphics at any size, and you can now customize the plugin size and configure it how you want it. There's undo and redo inside the plugin, which now responds to key commands if your host supports it, and a new mix knob that blends wet and dry signal for great effects. ARA2 is now fully implemented for Studio One and Logic with more DAWs on the way, instantly importing pitch and time data for fast editing. ARA2 now supports playhead synchronization from within the Autotune window, and you can stay engaged with the plugin as you locate and loop playback. There's a new presets manager with a roll the dice randomized selection button and a favorite system to mark preferred presets. And speaking of presets, several third parties and artists have contributed patches to Autotune Pro X, so you'll never run out of ideas or inspiration points. A new line display shows all of the notes included in an input selection type, and new machine learning algorithms can automatically set input type for glitch-free operation. Graph mode improvements include the option to automatically generate node objects upon loading, new zooming shortcuts, and the ability for zooming to be controlled via a mouse or trackpad using common key modifiers like command and control, accommodating for modern workflows. Other graph mode features include the ability to start Autotune directly in graph mode, the preference to hide or show the audio waveform, of course, and the ability to show a single or a dual waveform in the time base area. There's also a new feature that allows you to access any currently instantiated Autotune Pro X plugin from within the current user interface, and this allows fast edits between channels without cluttering up your screen. You'll also notice repositioned zoom presets, tool alterations for cutting and pasting data, and other graph mode improvements. Finally, there's expanded tooltip content, custom naming and location options for time-based effect folders, new light and dark modes, and an in-plugin bypass control. All right, so that about does it for the new features. Let's open up a session, show you what we're working with today, and off we go. All right, here's the session we're gonna use. I may have used it before on one of these things, but I don't know. Let's listen, and this will show off a bunch of different features, so off we go. Ah, she's got such a good voice. Some kind of 
coming into the first course here. Got the string track. All right, and so, you know, getting in the second verse and so forth is um, much the same. Now, you might imagine you can see final lead Vox here. I didn't want to play it with her untuned vocal, but I have it, and we're going to actually use that to show. And Autotune Pro was, was, you know, of course, instantiated, but bypassed. Let's bring that up, and you can see the new light mode here. It looks really good. The input type, key, and scale are the first things we'll set. With the new Learn feature, you can just simply play the track, and it's going to learn it, and it's alto and tenor. So that is one of the main settings that uh, gave people trouble before, and now it's just automatic. If you know about Auto Key, we'll go under here to Antares Auto Key. And I'll get to uh, the chorus, so it'll give a, a better impression of what the key actually is. Of course, it says C major. Let's listen. So how could you save me, darling, from you? E minor. All right, so that's definitely the key. So what I'm going to do is send uh, Auto-Tune here, and you'll see it change to E minor. If I bring up these other instantiated versions, they're uh, the same thing now. It sends it out to every instantiated version. So we're done with that. So the, with you know, with Autotune Pro X, your input type and your key and scale are already done for you. You can, of course, uh, set it to anything you want, but um, you know, E minor is what our thing is. This just says, hey, I want to receive from Auto Key if it's instantiated. And well, off we go. Let's solo this up and play a few things. You can hear the nice reverb I have on it. And that's, you know, it just is ready to go. This singer, her name is Allie Nicholas. She's a really great singer, and she's not going to need a ton. But let's go through a couple of things. Retune speed uh, deserves its own thing. And it, like before, I put together a little montage of how retune speed works. So let me bring that up and talk about it. So when I said montage, I really meant session. Here it is. It's just a sine wave going from 500 hertz to 1K, an octave. So let's, let's play it and I'll let you hear it. But Auto-Tune Pro is in bypass. It just goes up and down the octave. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, and so if we bring up Auto-Tune Pro, it's a little small and you can see this new feature where we just literally drag it to be a little bigger size. All right you know, from prepping, no, it's in B major, but I've got the retune speed at 400, and this is in milliseconds, so that's almost half a second here. So if we play it, it'll do nothing. Let me just show you. You'll, you'll not hear anything, you don't hear any delineations, but if I bring that retune speed up, remember this is in milliseconds and it takes uh, the retune speed for auto-tune to respond, so at zero, it responds instantly, and you'll begin to hear the B major scale. Listen. And you can hear the delineations. We could change this to B minor. Yep, and, or any of these other scales. And if we go to graph mode, and again, oh, I want to show you something. You can actually resize graph mode and auto mode to be different, and that's kind of cool. All right, so if we bring up graph mode here, I've already got it tracked in. And if we track in our... Um, auto mode pitch if just the settings we have here that's this button and you can begin to see how the curves respond you can see it all break down but if i bring the auto back let's bring it back to like 25 or 26 somewhere in there and then re-import now it's a little smoother and if I come back to too slow, you'll see, you know, you can make it too slow that Auto-Tune just won't even respond. And well, you get a little bump there, and that's about it. So that's kind of in a nutshell how Retune Speed works 
it, uh, it's basically in milliseconds, and it determines the time that it takes for autotune to respond to something you know, that comes in. If you want to get that autotune effect, the number one call autotune gets is, how do you get that autotune effect? Well, you just set it to scale and jam it to zero, and pff, there it is. It's, it's that easy. And uh, if you did this to a vocalist or an instrument like a guitar or something, it would, it would put it and make that autotune effect happen for you. The next control we need to talk about is flex tune. It's a really unique control that allows for a more natural result. Let me explain. Normal pitch correction involves setting a middle line in between half steps or scale degrees. Everything above the line gets pushed up to the next note in the scale. Everything below the line gets pushed down to the previous note. And this 50-50 quantization works really well until the instrumentalist or vocalist starts getting expressive. For example, sometimes a bend will get tuned back up when it should have been just kind of left alone, or a vibrato dip will get pushed down to the previous note when it should have been left alone too. And so flex time solves this problem by creating an ignore area. Everything above the now limited area gets pushed up and everything below it gets pushed down, but the area itself is ignored. So now, bends and deep vibratos are left alone and only pitches outside of the ignore area are quantized, resulting in an expressive, natural sound that's still in tune where it counts. You can really hear the effect of flex tune when you've got retune speed jammed up to zero going after that auto-tune effect. Let me play a little bit. And we'll start with flex tune at zero. You'll hear a little warbling in the auto tune effect. Yeah. So if we up this to about 20, it'll reduce the warble while still maintaining the auto tune sound, you know, for the effect. But if we bring it up to. Yeah, we, we stop tuning a lot of the stuff. We only get the kind of the. You know, the ignore area is so wide at this point. Yep. So if you're getting a lot of warble with your auto-tune effect, just increase flex tune just a little bit till the warble goes away. That's, that's the deal. All right, now that we understand all about where the big settings are, you know, retune speed, flex tune, keen scale, and so forth, let's talk about some of the cooler aspects of this plugin. A lot of people want to know what the modern and classic algorithms are all about. You've probably heard me say it before, especially if you've paid attention to some of the videos coming out from Autotune. Uh, classic mode is the classic Autotune 5 and before. So Autotune 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 use this particular algorithm, and it sounds kind of cool. It's a little computery. Let me... Um, let me play it. And you can really hear it at retune speeds of, of zero, you know, like where you just slam the effect. So listen. And the warble has a certain flavor. The high end has a certain flavor. And if I flip over to modern, you can still hear it, but it's not quite as computery. Here, let me go back and forth for you. You know, it's still quantizing right to the pitch, but it's not so in your face about it. So let's go back again and listen. Here's classic. Listen to the high end, listen to the kind of the grittiness of it. Right? Just a little smoother. All right, so if you back off your retune speeds to kind of reasonable levels and increase your flex tune so everything is not so tight and quantized, well, the modern algorithm to me sounds uh, just a little smoother. Listen, and you can hear. You can still hear, hear auto tune doing its work. Let's move over to classic, and I'll show you. It sounds more like a record, doesn't it? And in fact, let me turn off some of this reverb so that we can hear um, the raw stuff. I probably should have done this first, but oh well. 
I'm gonna switch over. Music like this is music that's magic. It's a if you want to know more about this, you can uh, download a demo version of this or download Autotune Unlimited for the free period that it allows you. And you can go back and forth and trigger it back and forth and see if you can hear it. While we are on the modern algorithm, what we have in that algorithm is a new format approach. Formats are resonances that stay the same no matter what your pitch does, but sometimes in the pitch tuning process, well, formats can get moved too, and eh, you don't want that. And so format keeps them straight, right at 100 where they should be. So let me kind of play it. It makes the vocal sound a little smoother. I always use it. Let me turn it off. You get a little more computery. You can really hear it. Um, yeah. Now, what format control allows you to do is either retune those resonances up or down, and they they pretty much should stay at the same volume. So listen, what happens? So we're really shortening and them uh, and pitching them together and then lengthening. So if we were going to transpose this up. We could really make our sound chipmunky or draw her back out. And so this is really cool if you've got a situation where you need to temporarily pitch up a step or two. So normally what happens when you transpose up, you know, like maybe two, she starts sounding a little kid-like, and we can lengthen the throat just a touch. No, it doesn't take much. Like, you're going to have to recut the vocal, but at least you can try it out without being all chip monkey, right? And if you have to go up a fifth, well, you know, now we can start doing... And that's prime remix time right there. If you're going to do an EDM version of this kind of a song. Yeah. Now, Classic makes all this go away, so uh, because these features were not part of the Classic algorithm, and being true to that here, uh, they go away. All right, in the mix, uh, let's put this back down. If we wanted a cool chorus effect, well, let's reset this here. So, let's just bang this to the top. Put it on Class M up. What we can do... So you hear that? So. And if we didn't want it so harsh, we could bring back the retune speed. Now we got kind of this. If I put format on it, it gets even crazier. Let me make sure it's on. Now we got a cool doubler or a little chorus. It's a cool feature, and I like it. And there's no phase induced uh, with the plug-in delays, so I do like how they compensated that. So the next couple of controls are, let me just gloss over them pretty quick. Humanize basically is for long notes. If you've got a long note that's a little tightly tuned, Humanize just relaxes it a little bit, just very subtly, so it can kind of go in and out uh, more naturally, so it's not just like glued to the line. Natural Vibrato works with the existing Natural Vibrato, and it either enhances it if you push it to um, the positive side or reduces it if you run it to the negative. Let me show you really quick. So, But it, it, you kind of have to use it with flex time because it'll push you down or up. There you go. Kind of reduces the vibe. And if I really want to accentuate it, yeah, it's pushing it out too far. So uh, you just use that with um, a little dash of, you know, taste to either bring out or kind of roll back the natural vibrato. I I just keep it set at zero. It's a great thing for when I need it, but I find it's really rare. Retune, speed, flex tune, and humanize for me are the main controls. All right, speaking of uh, vibrato and so forth, let's go to advanced mode here. Head over to the vibrato tab and talk about creating some vibrato. Uh, by default, it's off. And we could really screw up her vocal, so let's let's do that now. <laughs> and let's just add some craziness. We'll, we'll do a sine wave for the shape, and we'll make it affect pitch. 
And um, yeah. Music like this is music that's magic. Yeah, we'll put it on right away. Okay, so what I've done is I've created it, and normally there's an onset rate, uh, like when it hears the note, it'll wait just a minute, just like from natural vibrato. As you're a singer, you don't like ah right away. You kind of like ah and kind of like you know wait a minute, and that's what it's doing. And so we're gonna. Yeah, music and I've got it set like so fast that it's ridiculous. But you can affect pitch or none or amplitude. Watch this. There we go. Kind of like a little vibrato. We could get crazy here. Now that's cool, right? Yeah, you're not going to get that any other player. All right, let's turn that down and let's uh, vary the formats here. Right? Or we could turn the whole thing off. Or turn the whole thing off this way and just vary one or the other. And so, basically, that's how it works. So, you can kind of get an idea of what vibrato addition will do. Again, it's one of those things that I kind of use for an effect to make my things different. So, I would set it something like this. And really, and then, and I could really kind of get crazy if I really pull it down. See, well, I mean, we can get crazy. Let me put the reverb back on. See what we got. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's totally ridiculous, but there it is for you. All right, moving on. Okay, I've reset the plug-in here. And while we're on the advanced tab, let me move over to scale and show you how to create a custom scale. Right now, we're in E minor, and that's where we put it. That's great. But let me put it to chromatic here, and that way we can display all the notes here. And if I set major or minor, well, you can see all the notes uh, outlined in that scale, everything that's gray is uh, blocked off. And you can see it here another way. So this is the minor scale with the lowered sixth, and sometimes I prefer a raised sixth. So I could either do it on the keyboard uh, here and block that one out, and it would just do that one note. You know, if I wanted to do it in every octave, I would do it here. And that would be that, or I could just remove that note altogether. And so you can kind of create your own custom scale either globally or, for example, if I want a flat nine in this particular octave and not in this particular octave, and then again in this particular octave, well, you know, that's, that's possible now. Or if I wanted to do a second, uh, but maybe not a ninth. So, you know, these are things that are possible, and if you get lost, well, you can just reset to minor, and it kind of does that for you, or can uh, bypass the whole thing, and now it's back in chromatic mode. So setting your own scale is really cool. You can also uh, hook up a MIDI keyboard to it, and if you go back to some of the videos that I've done for Antares, you can see how to hook that up and how to make that happen. It's pretty fun. Okay, let's move to graph mode. All right, so we're in graph mode. The first thing to do is get pitch in. Uh, the easiest way, not necessarily the fastest way, is to hit pitch and hit play. Uh, but there are some easier ways, or rather, some faster ways to do it. If you go ARA2 with Studio One or Logic, that makes it really simple. There are other DAWs in development. Pro Tools has uh, the commit thing that I've been through uh, both for Insta and on other videos. If you hit commit while pitch is activated over here, uh, and make sure that do nothing for your source tracks. Make sure that that is checked. Uh, if you'll hit that, well, you can see everything go in in real time, uh, rather faster than real time, while you watch, and it's as fast as your computer will handle. So here we go. And that brings everything in. And then when you get to, um, you know, where it puts on the extra tracks, you just hit undo in Pro Tools, and, well, off you go. So now we have some pitch objects already put in for us, and that's actually new. That's a preference uh, for graph mode preferences. After tracking, you can make node objects by default or curves or import the settings from auto mode, which we'll go over. Uh, this is a new thing. Normally, nothing happened, and so you were just kind of left with a blank slate. 
I'm actually going to not show the waveform here because I want to get a little clearer on where our pitch is. Let me zoom in maybe to a section here. And this is what's going on. So we have these node objects. And if we'll select these node objects, we hear the pitch of where it's going to be. And I've got it skipping the chromatic notes because we're in the minor scale. And so it put node objects according to this key and scale. If I wanted to hear the in-betweens, I would just switch over to chromatic and it would allow me to get those notes available. We'll put it back in minor for now. And if I wanted more or fewer notes, uh, depending on how it automatically set, we just change our density here and we can put in more notes or different kinds of notes, uh, depending on what the key and scale are. Again, I think 50 is a great uh, automatic thing. You know, Antares has really gone a long way for a lot of this automatic stuff in, in version Pro X and I appreciate it. Okay, so you can see the original pitch in red, and then the green pitch is where it's going to be. And in each note object, if we came over here, all right, let me get out of zoom. If we came over here, you could see, well, now let me zoom in again, sorry. You could see exactly what's going on uh, and change the retune speed for each individual note object if you wanted it to. Now, I don't know why you do that. Typically, you do it as a group but uh, you could do a lot of different editing. Or you could get rid of the node object here. I just hit delete, create a line, and um, now have a line just for that, and then adjust the retune speed on that as well. Since we're talking about lines and curves and retune speed and so forth, let's get rid of these node objects here. And I'm just gonna hit clear. We're gonna get rid of all the pitch correction objects. It's gonna leave the original pitch. Let me zoom out and show you something really cool. Let's say I've got uh, auto mode rocking for me, but it's just a little too warbly. And let's, let me open this up just a little more. Let's shove the retune speed up, put it in classic mode. Um, and well, let's let that be that, E minor. We're gonna go over to graph mode now. And if I import, see it says create curves from either the normal curves that are available or from the auto and let's just create the curves and we'll zoom in and I can show you that it's all kind of like squared off and quantized. See that? Let me zoom in some more for you guys. Look at that. So if we played it from the very beginning. And it's the automo. And so what we can do with something like this, let me let me zoom in a little bit better here and go back to the beginning. Like right there, there's a burble. So what I'll do is I'll hit my multi, well, I'll hit my line tool actually, and we'll just draw that burble or whatever that's called out, uh, and we can listen. Yeah, there's some burbles there. So let's use a line tool to just pull them right out. We could actually create. Uh, a series of notes here on this line tool with our retune speed at zero. Listen to this. So we could do anything we wanted to do. Uh, and we started with importing curves. If I wanted to relax auto mode just a bit, put it back on modern mode, a uh, modern algorithm, increase flex time, uh, in enhance the vibrato just a little bit, and then bring in the auto mode again, it would now bring in those curves. Or if I wanted to do um, just natural curves and then maybe grab the whole thing, so we'll select all here, use our uh, arrow to, and we can just bring the whole thing up or down, and we could repitch it that way if we wanted to, keeping the original curves. Now, that works better in some phrases than others, but what I would do is maybe take a phrase or two and then bring those up. And so sometimes somebody with a lot of vibrato, I'll just take the vibrato and bring that up or down to the proper pitch uh, accordingly. Let me see if I can find some vibrato on her and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, so sometimes maybe I just take this whole phrase right here and bring it up to, you know, wherever it would be more in pitch. And well, that's how to use lines and curves and retune speed and all kinds of different things. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thanks again to Imsta for allowing us to participate. They've always been good to me personally. I've worked with Ray on and off since 2006, and they've always been very gracious to Antares and the Autotune team in particular. 
I support the work Insta does and I'm happy to have been part of this day with you. Check out the other Insta stream where I'll go over the three newest Autotune plugins, Slice, Vocodist, and the all-new Vocal EQ. So that's it for now. I'm Chris Griffin. Thanks for your time today.